I welcome everyone to this session on full moon Aries. Today being the full moon of Aries, we will try to read from the book Wisdom of the Zodiac by Torkum Sir. Uh, we will try to read three chapters. Uh, today actually we are uh, starting the 12th full moon cycle starting from the full moon of Aries and then Taurus and then Gemini and then we have Cancer, Leo, Virgo and then Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius and then Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. So these are the uh, 12, 12 uh, full moon zodiacal, 12 zodiacal signs. So we are starting the cycle from Aries. So I think it would be better if we also read uh, the importance of the full moons and the guidelines which need to be followed during the full moon meditation periods. And then we will go into the Aries full moon uh, concept and then we will do meditation. So I would request uh, Rekha ji to Please read the chapter Three Major Full Moons. Yeah, thank you, Nanda. Yeah. Three Major Full Moons. There are 12 or sometimes 13 full moon festivals in the year. Three of them are especially important Aries, Taurus, and Gemini. The Aries full moon is related to the resurrection of the life that is in every form. We are advised to start the annual process of resurrecting our nature at this full moon. At this time, we try to resurrect our spirit from materialism, separatism, and many kinds of attachments and identifications. We try to focus ourselves within our true self. The next important full moon is the full moon of Taurus, or the festival of enlightenment. Enlightenment is the ability to understand your path, your future, and your destination. Once you know your future, your destination, and your path, you have some kind of light, and through that light, you can travel on a higher path. You no longer follow the path of your physical, emotional, and mental complications, glamours, and illusions. The third major full moon is the full moon of Gemini or the festival of humanity. Someday, this festival will be celebrated all over the world. All humanity will celebrate the concept of one humanity and one world. As a result, humanity will eventually eliminate killing, revolutions, wars and wasting of taxes. Why should we celebrate full moons? We are told that at the exact moment of the full moon, when the sun shines its rays on the moon in the maximum degree, the moon's influence on the earth is at its lowest. As a result, cosmic currents bringing inspiration, impressions and revelations are able to reach the earth more directly. These cosmic currents accumulate around the sun and the sun focuses them on the solar system. At the Earth's full moon time, the Sun is better able to transmit these currents and uplifting energies to the Earth. At this moment, the disciples of the world can contact these energies, absorb them in their centers and later distribute them in their activities. We are feeling the traditional dates of the Sun entering into various constellations but we must be kept aware that these dates and constellations are in the process of change. Further information about these changes will be given in our future publications if it seems necessary. In order to take advantage of the full moon opportunity, we need to prepare ourselves. We prepare ourselves for the full moon for five days. The two days before the full moon are called days of preparation. The full moon day itself is called the day of contact. The two days after the full moon are called the days of radiation. 
the preparation for the full moon is physical emotional and mental in a sense we are like an electric wire that will be connected to a tremendous powerhouse of energies at the time of the full moon the wire needs to be clean and conductive to have a purified nature so that when the switch is turned on the wire does not overheat or become damaged only a nature that is healthy clean and strong can carry the current of higher powered energy to all the parts of your house to your organs your nervous and glandular systems and to your etheric emotional and mental centers the physical body can be prepared during the days of preparation by proper rest rest is essential for the etheric centers and the nervous system while you rest many poisons that have accumulated in your physical and etheric systems are eliminated in addition to resting the physical body it is also recommended to rest one sexual activity during the five day period of the full moon the reserved sexual energy will change charge and energize the cells brain and nervous system we are also advised not to drink alcohol smoke cigarettes or use any kind of drugs during this time such substances reduce the sensitivity of the physical mechanism in order to absorb and radiate the currents of inspiration from the full moon time the physical body must be sensitive and free from any poisons there is also emotional preparation our goal is to make the emotional body a pure conductor of cosmic energies if the emotional nature is not pure and sensitive it distorts the incoming energies and creates disturbances in our lives what are the emotions we need to eliminate from our emotional body they are fear anger hatred jealousy revenge and desire all desires result from an attachment to a form rather than to the life within the form of course you cannot eliminate all the disturbing element elements from your nature at once but year after year if you are persistent eventually you will conquer and eliminate them you will start to feel that you are assimilating some kind of energy in your emotional system that is expanding and uplifting your consciousness making you inclusive and universal next there is preparation of the mental nature the first thing you must do is to try is try to eliminate your showing off and vanity vanity means to think you are someone outstanding when you are not to think that you have many talents when you have only one or none to think you can do everything when in fact you can only do a few things vanity is an attitude of inflated self importance in which you fall in love with yourself your personality nature vanity means to be attached to your shell instead of your real self you must overcome your sense of self importance without losing your true identity you can do this by cultivating the idea that you are a child of the almighty one along with many billions and trillions of other such children then you will begin to realize that you are not really so important but that there is one important thing the universal self in which we are all little cells if this concept penetrates into your soul your whole life will change why must such disturbing traits be eliminated from your nature if they are not eliminated every time you receive a higher energy it will stimulate your negative traits if you have seeds of weeds in your flower garden the water and sunlight make them sprout and grow sometimes faster than the flowers grow what are the contacts you can have at the full moon a contact can be a breakthrough in your nature it can be a contact with your higher self with a vision within you or a future within you the future within you is beyond what you now call yourself maybe the contact will be with your soul with your master with your ashram with a cosmic energy or a cosmic being 
you can come in contact with the hierarchy. You can contact the Christ, any master, or anyone you really love. Contact means to go beyond yourself. The exact moment of the full moon is a very sacred moment. At the full moon time, you must make a retreat to the secret chamber within you and say, I want to contact you. I am looking for you. Where are you? You can have that higher contact. You may feel an electrical charge in your body that will cause a change in your nature. Then, when you return to your home or office, you will see things in a different light from a different perspective. Things will not bother you as much anymore and you will not take things so personally. As the charging process increases, full moon after full moon, you will develop a holistic approach to life and all events. You will develop a very sharp intuition. People will no longer be able to deceive you. You will become a source of freedom and goodness for other people. What will you do with these higher energies that you receive at the full moon time? On the first and second days after the full moon, you must radiate these energies to your surroundings. You will do this with your utmost solemnity and love, spreading these energies through your thoughts. You must send peace, beauty, harmony and unity everywhere, proclaiming through your thoughts that we are all human beings and we want to live together in goodwill on this planet. You must broadcast these thoughts as if you were, you were working in a broadcasting station. Then you must talk about these beautiful concepts. If you are a writer or musician, you must emphasize them in your work that day. When you meet people, you must bring these ideas to them through a joy or a smile or when you say something about how it is possible to create a world harmony in which everyone can enjoy living on earth. If you do these things, you will become a charged center of uplifting energies during these two days. If you do the necessary preparation, you will be able to control these energies, express them creatively and not become overwhelmed or distorted by them. Preparation is a process of opening your higher centers and controlling your lower centers. During the time of preparation, you will turn off the lower centers so that they do not receive energy. For example, you can close your solar plexus by avoiding gossip, criticism, unnecessary talking and slander. You can also close this center by raising the solar plexus energy into the heart center. Solar plexus emotionality must become lovingness, must become lovingness. The real love of the heart center is the pure understanding of the intuition. In addition, you can raise the energy of the sex center to the throat center, which is a center of creativity. Try to avoid sexual relations for the five days of the full moon period. Why should this be impossible? How will you ever be able to use universal and cosmic energies if you cannot close even a few faucets in your body for a little while? If people do not prepare themselves, the incoming energies overstimulate them. Then, when the energies come, they say and do stupid things. They drive recklessly, they cry or laugh for no reason. They become angry and make poor decisions and they do not know why. It is also known that more crimes are committed during the full moon time than at any other time of the month. Studies show that at psychiatric hospitals, patients become more disturbed at this time. This is because the energies are too much for them to handle and they cannot control the extra stimulation. We participate in the full moon period not to become unbalanced, but to go through a purification process every month. After the purification process, we become better able to radiate light and love to others. We also realize that we must become more responsible in our lives. This is the greatest achievement. If you can make someone a person of responsibility, 
so that he cares for the planet, for human life, and for the future of our children, both you and he have had a tremendous breakthrough. Do you know what you are leaving to your children? Of course, it is a joy to have children, but what you are leaving them? But what are you leaving them? A polluted planet, polluted air, water and earth, increasing numbers of nuclear weapons and radioactivity? Why are we giving our children such a terrible inheritance? It is because scientists and politicians did not think in terms of the future because our leaders were not purified enough to think about the future. What is going to happen to our children 100 years from now? Will they be able to clean this planet? Of course, you want to earn a good living and be respected. But for what? What difference will these things make if you do not live a life that is really beautiful? This is why we emphasize the full moon opportunity. The full moon is a period in which you can come to your senses. Observing the full moon period is not a religion or a cult practice, but a science. It is a science of energies. The great sages knew these signs. The great ones were wise enough to utilize the seasons and the cycles of energy in order to achieve personal transmutation and transformation and to transmit higher energies to the world. If we adjust ourselves to the cycles, and seasons of the greater universe, we will create harmony between ourselves and the universe. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rekha ji. Uh, it's very important that we know what are the three major full moons. Because uh, I have read in many uh, books of Torquem Sir that a true disciple prepares himself so that he can make a contact during the full moon period. Every month he makes preparation to contact, to make a contact with his soul or with his guru and with his masters on full moon day. And the great disciples, they make preparation for the entire year so that they can make a contact with the hierarchy on the full moon period of Vesak, which is next month. So the disciples take this full moon periods very seriously and they go through a lot of preparations. So hope that uh, these three important full moons are known and uh, that is the reason we have read this chapter even though uh, we are now in the Aries full moon period. And now we will read the other chapter, chapter number 2. Chapter 2 Introduction Guidelines for Full Moon Observations When someone says to you, today there is an opportunity for you to cross this mountain but a few days later the snow is coming and then you will not be able to pass you would be stupid not to do that. Someone else may say, if you buy this land now and sell it three years later, you can make three times more money. But if you lose this opportunity, you will lose the money. Someone else tells you that you have a flat tire, so you must not drive. If you do not listen, you may have an accident. All these words are warnings about making the most of situations and opportunities. We can take exactly the same advice at the full moon. Full moons are like real estate or bank accounts. If you do not take the opportunity of the full moons, you lose greater contacts with the universe and greater contacts with your own soul. And you miss new breakthroughs towards Christmas. What is the phenomenon of the full moon? When the sun hits the face of the moon that is turned towards us, and totally illuminates that face, we call that a full moon. When the earth moves and covers the face of the moon, we say that we are going towards the new moon. When the sun slowly sheds light and floods the moon with its light, it prevents the moon's radiations from reaching us. The moon has radiation, 
but its radiation is astral. The Tibetan master says that the etheric body of the moon has already disappeared and only its astral body remains. Because of this, the moon tremendously influences human emotions. When the sun hits the moon and pushes back all that astral radiation, we are left alone to come to our senses and listen to our inner suggestions. The rays of the sun obliterate the radiation of the moon and neutralize it. As we move from the full moon to the new moon, we are involved in more earthbound activities. Our three lower bodies are called lunar bodies. When the rays of the sun hit the moon less and less, the moon affects the personality vehicles more and striving towards light becomes difficult. It is a super scientific method to observe the full moon. Observation means to take the opportunity at the full moon time and do the necessary things to expand your consciousness, to gain control over your body and eventually to release the light within you. At the full moon time, which lasts only 12 hours, all of the hierarchy sits down for meditation. This means that they radiate towards humanity a great energy of concepts, ideas, thought forms, love and wisdom. They radiate their light, love and power towards humanity so that they may help humanity disperse mental, emotional and physical pollutions. At the full moon time, hierarchy is thus doing a great service for humanity. A second thing happens at the full moon. The inner guide or the angel within you, the transpersonal self, tries to do the same thing the hierarchy is doing. It radiates its love, light and energy to the personality and to the human soul. If you catch this opportunity and listen with great expectation to what your inner transpersonal self is giving to you, you will enrich your life and expand your consciousness with love, light and energy. The third thing that happens at every full moon is that the one who is watching you, whether it is your teacher, your master, Christ or any great one, sends a line of love to you so that you are attracted to him more closely. If you can catch this cable and hold on to it, you have a hope to live. It is at the full moon time that the watchful eye may contact you, if you are magnetic enough and ready enough. The three major full moons are the greatest opportunity from which to draw benefit. The first major full moon is Aries, through which the forces of resurrection hit our souls and stimulate in us an urge or a striving towards resurrection. In a simple definition, resurrection means to make a breakthrough towards greater light, love and energy. Resurrection is a breakthrough for freedom. Resurrection is the ability to transform all your being and gain your spiritual freedom. The second major full moon is the Fezhak full moon. The Tibetan master says that it is the greatest point of opportunity for people to take initiations contact great ones and eventually penetrate into ashrams and the hierarchy. Nothing is more important during the year in relation to your expansion of consciousness and spiritual progress than this full moon. The third major full moon is called the full moon of Christ or humanity, the Gemini full moon. The full moon of the great invocation or right human relations or the full moon of all those who are aspiring to serve humanity. At this full moon, the energy of right human relations are given to humanity so that instead of devouring each other and creating separatism, hatred, revenge and destruction, people slowly come to their senses and say, let's make this planet a happy planet because we have to live here. We must make this planet a healthy and happy planet in which everyone can live in joy, freedom and good relationship. The energy to help do this is released from the hierarchy at this full moon because the hierarchy wants humanity to be united. This energy destroys all kinds of thought forms that are separative. At the full moon time, all disciples reorient and reorganize themselves, just as we tune and repair our cars, radios and televisions to function in the best way possible. Disciples must go through a tuning process until they find the right station and that station is their soul. At the full moon time, hierarchy spreads light, love and energy first towards humanity and second up towards Shambhala, the father's home. Christ said, my father has a home and it has many mansions. 
from those mansions comes greater power and at the time of the full moon the hierarchy meditates concentrates and focuses itself to take the directives coming from that center on the one hand hierarchy receives this higher direction and breaks it down to fit the human need on the other hand shambhala which is a great center on this planet tries to contact the solar lord so that it conducts the ship which is the planet according to the commands coming from the solar source at the full moon time there is an alignment going on man is aligning with his soul he is aligning with the vision of discipleship and with his master hierarchy is aligning with shambhala shambhala is aligning with the sun the full moon is a moment of opportunity that is open for us if we are clever and wise enough not to miss that opportunity expansion of consciousness takes place during the full moon time if the needed work of preparation has been done the tibetan master says that during the full moon a window opens and higher energies are contacted it is so important to know how to observe the full moon observations of the full moon does not have to involve fanaticism if you go to the doctor and he tells you to take a certain pill three times a daily stay in bed and drink certain liquids do you call your doctor a fanatic similarly it is not fanaticism to make yourself ready for the full moon what does the doctor say to you at the full moon time first at the full moon time do not eat meat meat creates those magnetic attractions that connect you to the moon second do not use alcohol during the five day period of the full moon third do not drink coffee or black tea at this time because they are stimulants of astral energy fourth do not smoke or use drugs especially at the time of the full moon fifth do not have sex during the full moon period this does not refer to physical sex only but also to sex with your imagination and desires during the full moon time you must pull the cur- the curtain on sex and say no play finished your car must be in top condition so that it can handle that great voltage of energy six do not watch television or go to night clubs during the full moon period because these activities will break the field of magnetism that you are building the radiation coming from television night club entertainment and so on will disturb the field that is receiving higher energies these are physical observations if you do these six things you will feel new energies new creativity new strive and new will power within you you will not be the same person you were a week earlier there are also seven emotional observations for the full moon period first if you can by all possible means do not hate during the time of the full moon second if you can do not be angry if you observe your life you will see that it is usually exactly at the full moon time the problems come and knock on your door they come and test you at the full moon time to see whether you have made an improvement or not third get rid of any feelings of revenge fourth avoid greed greed saps your psychic energy fifth do not daydream about various desires sixth do not gossip If someone starts to gossip to you, just drop it and say, "I do not want to hear it." A disciple of Christ, Saint James, once said that if you can control your mouth, you can control the world. Avoiding gossip is the first area of control of the mouth. The second area of control is not to lie. There are so many kinds of lies: white lies, black lies, square lies, round lies, gesture lies, tonality lies. There are maybe twenty-five varieties. For example, pretending is a lie. You do not know something, but you act as if you know. Showing off is a lie. Seven. You must avoid stealing. You may say, "For ten years, I have not stolen anything." But what about stealing others' ideas, stealing expressions, stealing the reputation of others? Every time you catch yourself stealing, stop it. Your improvement will appear when you find out more and more deeply how you can prevent yourself from stealing. Maybe you are not stealing with your hands, but you are stealing with your mind, heart, and emotions. spiritually you can steal there are many spiritual religious thieves who steal different things one day a preacher said to me i never lie a few days later he was talking about a parable to an audience and citing the wrong source for the parable the parable was from buddha but because he hated buddha he did not want to say it was from buddha so he lied when i asked him about it later he said you know i did it to please people if you try to please people you will lie and gossip and steal This idea is very hard to accept because our whole society is built on the principle of pleasing people. Every time you try to please people, you do wrong. 
But isn't it good to be pleasant with other people? You may ask. Of course, it's good. But we're talking about pleasing people for your self-interest. Next, you must avoid slander, malice, and treason, especially during the five-day full moon period. In addition, there are some further duties to be observed during the full moon period. One, during the twelve-hour full moon period, it is very good if you can keep silent. If it is night time, you are lucky. But some people even talk in their dreams. Silence is great here. First, you must learn to be silent with your mouth. Then you must be silent with your emotions. Then you must be silent with your mind and thoughts. Mental silence does not mean to make your mind a vacuum. It means not to produce any conversations with your mind. Two, you must do meditation every day during the full moon period. No matter how much you escape during the month, when the full moon comes, you must gather yourself together and start something. At the full moon time, you must impose your spiritual will upon your personality. Prayer at the full moon time is very important. You can say the great invocation or the Lord's prayer. With prayer, you keep yourself in the mood of communication with higher forces. This is the important thing. Third, the third duty is to read the chapters that pertain to the full moon period in the book Symphony of the Zodiac. Four, after the full moon, try to be joyful and feel the urge to serve other people for a few days. The full moon will charge you so much that the dangers of the darkening moon will not be able to distort your frequency. Some people wonder about creative work during the full moon time. According to esoteric instructions, creative work must be done after the full moon. During the full moon period, you gather your energies, charge yourself and contact greater visions and beauty. Then after the full moon period, you start giving them up. Real creativity starts when your barrel is full. You must be charged in order to give something, just as you must have a full tank of gas before you start driving. Real creativity is a continuous expression of accumulating energy. Please bear in mind that we are not sponsoring worship of the moon, which is a dead planet. We are dealing with the energies of the constellations in which the sun is at the time of the full moon. Question. What happens when there are two full moons in the same sign? Answer. Two moons in the same sign have a very deep significance. The first moon of the sign is in the zodiacal energy with the birth sign of the person born in that sign. The second full moon in the same sign links the man with his rising sign. The rising sign is the future of the disciple and the limitations of the birth sign can be eliminated by cultivating the virtues of the rising sign. Every time we have a second full moon, we can focus our attention on our rising sign and try to cultivate the virtues of our rising sign. This brings us balance and equilibrium. Our rising sign is related to our soul and also to the form of our hierarchical service. An advanced disciple can contemplate in the second full moon about the service that he is rendering or should render to hierarchy. This second full moon is a grace period, an opportunity to draw the disciple closer to his solar angel and to the hierarchy. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Anju. Now, uh, yeah, guidelines for the full moon is very important uh, to avoid uh, unnecessary things. So, since we are taking in energy, we have to keep our system pure. If not, short circuits may happen. So, purity is very important. Uh, it's So, what we are dealing is actually a very powerful source of energy. So, we have to be right receptacles for these energies. Uh, I hope that this particular chapter uh, cleared a lot of our doubts and uh, it's important that we go through this particular chapter again and again. Yeah, so now uh, we will come to the uh, Aries <coughs> portal of opportunity. Uh, I'm Sainandan Reddy from Initiatic Solutions. So. Uh, after this particular chapter, there is a meditation. So first I want to show you the meditation part uh, so that you will understand what you have to gain from this chapter. So the important point what I want to tell you is this one. Uh, yeah, Visualize yourself breaking at least one limitation that you have. This is a step toward resurrection. Resurrection means overcoming your limitations. It could be physical, emotional, mental. Okay. 
uh, and the seed thought is resurrection is the victory of the spirit over matter so the only way to overcome the matter which are the uh, hindrances within our system is through contact the spirit dimension and by also overcoming our limitations so what we will do in, in this particular chapter is we will try to identify our limitations as we go through this chapter so yes so that when you identify your limitations you can use that in the meditation aries portal of opportunity at the aries full moon nature gives humanity a special opportunity to strive towards perfection the purpose of life is to perfect ourselves in all aspects of our lives we must strive for perfection we must be physically beautifully beautiful emotionally shining mentally illuminated and spiritually like lightning so that we fulfill our purpose in this life and move ahead in our eternal journey this life we are living is such a short moment when we consider it in terms of the eternity we are going to live great ones tell us that this life is merely a preparation for a greater life nature gives us opportunities to perfect ourselves in this preparation in the spiritual year there are three portals of opportunity one is the aries full moon the second is taurus full moon and the third is gemini full moon these three events are the highlights of the spiritual year at the aries full moon through the energy of the first ray a tremendously powerful energy is given to humanity to help it overcome its limitations aries is the festival of resurrection we may define resurrection as an ever progressing victory over our limitations and errors limitations exist to make us exercise our own faculties and powers and bring out our spiritual resources through these efforts and striving we resurrect the great one within us when we resurrect the great the one within us who is buried in matter glamours illusions and pleasures we are victorious we master life most of us do not understand why we are here we are like a lost dog who wanders onto the freeway and eventually runs in front of a car and is killed on the freeway of life we have lost our direction we have lost the one direction that exist which is the path toward victory over our limitations and failures you may wonder whether you can really be resurrected of course you can because the resurrected one is already within you it is only a matter of actualization of bringing that reality out that is already there there are 12 steps given by great sages to achieve resurrection do not attach to worldly objects but use them wisely for good we are all attached to worldly objects of life we must restrict ourselves from these attachments so that we are not buried with them we must be grateful for the things we have and use them without attachment for the good a world of prosperity is in the hands of humanity if objects are used in this way if you are identified with worldly objects you will take them with you like a 10 ton burden when you are trying to climb to the super worlds all your objects will become your curse with your imagination and desires you will carry them with you people have preached about resurrection for 2000 years and now we are facing an atomic disaster 
because we did not practice this first important step. Consider the world as a mortal in which nothing belongs to you. You must not feel that the world is yours. It is rather a place where you live for a while and then say goodbye, taking nothing with you. Resurrection is a step-by-step -step detachment from things that are limiting your freedom and blooming. Do daily meditation. Meditation means to sit quietly and think about a high-level idea. Think about a high-level idea such as beauty, infinity or the glory of creation. Sit and think about how glorious you are. Did you ever realize that the greatest masterpiece in the universe is the human being? Everything about you is so precious. Think about this and give thanks to whomever you can for what you are. If you realize your preciousness, you will never do anything that hurts your preciousness. Have times for admiration. This is a very simple but a very complicated concept. Sit and listen to music and admire it. The secret of admiration is that in admiration your spirit resurrects itself from your problems, limitations and faults. In admiration you are resurrected for a few minutes from your own grave. Leave gossip, malice and slander alone because they are poisonous rattlesnakes. You need only admiration. You must find something daily to admire because whenever you lose admiration, you go in the opposite direction toward criticism and hatred. Admiration is a step towards resurrection. In focusing your mind on something beautiful, you call forth the beauty in others. You release the beauty in others. You increase the beauty in others. In talking about germs and microbes, you increase those germs and microbes. Do not hurt people with your thoughts, actions or emotions. Anyone who hurts others builds a karmic chain around his own feet and until he pays for that chain, he will not be released. Do not cause damage to others. Try to lift them up. This is one of the fundamental dynamics of resurrection. You must live in a way that people benefit from your existence and are not defeated by your existence. Be a beauty shining on the path of others. This is the meaning of resurrection. Dedicate your life for the service of humanity. This simple truth is not yet understood by most politicians. They only understand we as enemies. There are no enemies or friends. There is only one body, the body of humanity. We exist only to benefit humanity, not ourselves. Until we actualize this idea, we will never be resurrected. We will be like worms, living in caves in the fear of destruction. Always know that the invisible hand, the invisible eye and the invisible ear are around you. This is the path of resurrection. The invisible hand will either lift you, uplift you and save you or throw you away. The invisible eye watches you. The invisible eye hears your thoughts and words and even your motives. If you start living in this presence, you will always be victorious. In thinking about the ever-present ear, eye and hand, you behave yourself and you build the path of resurrection for others. Contemplate a glorious future for yourself. Amazingly, people do not do this. I have counseled so many people who come to me and say, I am miserable, I am failing, I am sick, I am stupid. I stop them every time and say, stop thinking this way and think about a glorious future. Think how beautiful your life is going to be, how shining you are going to be. Whatever a man thinks, that is what he is going to become. 
even god has failures but his greatness is that he is not limited by his failures do not defeat yourself by imagining that you are a defeated one once an artist came to me and said i am 50 years of age and i cannot create any more my life as an artist is over <clears throat> who said so i asked her you can start creativity even at age 90 creativity starts in your heart if you have a vision you can be creative that vision will be your future perfection which will lead you toward greater development and unfoldment daily for a few minutes think that you are not this body the body is such a curse for humanity people are totally one with their bodies they eat drink lie down jump joy enjoy and that is all then if you ask them who they are they say i am this body you are not your body you are not your emotions you are not your thoughts you are beyond all these things to realize this and actualize the it you must daily start thinking for one or two minutes that you are not this body one minute a day is enough look at your hand and say i am not this hand i do not have to move this hand unless i say to move it then it will move eventually you can learn to control and master your body emotions and mind this is resurrection the resurrection of christ is not a demonstration or a showing off but a challenge man must eventually learn to sublimate and transform his this body he must be able to leave this body and travel where he wants as great ones do some great ones leave their bodies and go visit other planets and then come back a great sage says that humanity does not need to spend billions of dollars going to the moon when they can go there in a second every night for 2 minutes watch the stars so that you develop an affinity with cosmos during the war truman and roosevelt used to go to the balcony at night during difficult times and look at the stars when someone asked them why they are doing that they said to renew our humility this is the meaning of resurrection if you can jump out of your smallness into the vision of human infinity you are resurrecting yourself do not look at the stars and cry look at them and feel yourself in them and say with gratitude my lord this is something very glorious in this way you can charge your entire being with psychic energy and transform yourself once a month take a retreat for one day totally isolate yourself and think about your future life if you do this you will not be the same person do not think about your faults and errors do not condemn yourself do not judge yourself think about the everlasting life that is waiting for you let your thoughts be occupied daily as much as possible with the five pointed star the five pointed star stands for beauty goodness righteousness joy freedom try to approach life from these terms if anything happens against these five principles try to stop it try to think beautifully talk about love and live and live for love try to act and think in righteousness even if you are losing be a righteous person think about freedom and try never to limit the freedom of other people if you limit the freedom of other people you are not a free person yourself only in giving freedom to others do you gain freedom for yourself try to be joyful and make people joyful make people happy do not poison or contaminate their lives do not send people 
dirty thoughts critical thoughts thoughts of condemnation only in giving joy to others can you make yourself joyful resurrection is a process of increasing joyfulness so now let us meditate for some time yeah it has been a little lengthy session because we have covered three chapters so now let us meditate please close your eyes let us say <clears throat> the great invocation <clears throat> try to visualize as much as possible from the point of light within the mind of god let light stream forth into the minds of men let light descend on earth from the point of love within the heart of god let love stream forth into the hearts of men may christ return to earth from the center where the will of god is known let purpose guide the little wills of men the purpose which the masters know and serve from the center which we call the rays of men let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells let light and love and power restore the plan on earth <clears throat> now let us sound om three times sound creates harmony and communion with the universe om Oh. 
visualize a fiery arrow going toward the sun. Visualize a fiery arrow going toward the sun. Now visualize yourself breaking at least one limitation that you have. Visualize yourself breaking at least one limitation that you have. Now, the following is the seed thought. Try to think about it. You may make a note of the ideas which you get. The seed thought is, resurrection is the victory of the spirit over matter. Resurrection is the victory of the spirit over matter. Try to think about it, try to make notes.
let us repeat the great invocation from the point of light within the mind of God let light stream forth into the minds of men let light descend on earth from the point of love within the heart of God let love stream forth into the hearts of men may christ return to earth from the center where the will of god is known let purpose guide the little wills of men the purpose which the masters know and serve from the center which we call the race of men let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells let light and love and power restore the plan on earth let us now sound three ohms <clears throat>
Thank you so much. Slowly open your eyes. How was the meditation? You can share your experiences. Please. Yeah, it was very good. Uh, the idea of breaking one limitation was very practical and nice. <laughs> yeah, I too thought the same. <laughs> there are so many <laughs> limitations, but at least one, <laughs> one, one by one. <laughs> yeah. Murli ji, how did you feel? Yeah, it was it was very intense. Yeah, intense meditation and is enjoyed after a long time. Yeah, 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 yeah. After a long time. <laughs> Thank you, Murli ji. Thank you so much. Uh, it's important that we make a note of the ideas and meditations which we do. So only that will help us gauge our depth of meditation. We should be in a position to write few papers after meditation, like Torkam sir has did. Torkam sir used to meditate and uh, then he used to download ideas into his mental body. And then he used to uh, put those ideas into thoughts and then into words in his books. So yeah so today we have actually covered uh, three different chapters uh, the three major full moons and the guidelines and the portal of opportunity i mean about the aries so aries is all about resurrection that means overcoming our, our limitations from being just in material aspect to making a breakthrough and entering into the spirit aspect. So these energies are very important. This is a major full moon. Aries is a major full moon. And there are three more, two more major full moons. I hope that uh, we meditate in our spare time and uh, try to make notes of any breakthrough which you have uh, achieved or which you want to achieve. It is important to make note of it. So I hope that you all have enjoyed this session. Uh, is there anything you want to share? Please go on. You want to share anything? Please. Yeah. So let's wrap up this session. Uh, thank you for attending this full moon meditation and book reading session on Aries full moon. I am Sai Nandan Reddy from Initiatic Solutions. Please take care. Namaste. Pranams to everyone.